I would like to welcome you to our service from the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. We're thankful that you have joined us, and let us now come together in our responsive call to worship. As the sun set over the village of Emmaus, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his friends. Then in their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Today we gather in the presence of this table, font, and pulpit, hoping, trusting to behold the risen Lord. May our eyes be opened to recognize Jesus in our midst. salvation, Christ rose from depths of earth. This is our assurance that whenever we come before God with those things that burden us, we are received with open arms, with grace poured out upon us in greater abundance than we can scarce imagine. With this assurance in our hearts, let us join together in our unison prayer of confession, which will be followed by a time of silent prayer. Living Lord, by the power of your Spirit, you are present among us. Yet, like the first disciples, we fail to see you in our midst. We do not realize you are walking beside us, for we are consumed with our own cares and desires. We do not recognize you on our streets or at our tables. For our expectations are too limited to imagine all the ways you dwell among us. Open our eyes to perceive you in our midst, so that, seeing you clearly, we might follow you faithfully. Amen.
Let us now join together in responsively assuring one another of God's pardon. Through the risen Christ, you have come to trust in God. Who raised him from the dead and gave him glory. So that your faith and hope are set on God. We rejoice that our sins are forgiven. Hi, you guys. Today, I am here dressed in a funny way, right? If you saw me on the street, you might not recognize me. I have a mask on like a lot of people do nowadays. I have dark glasses on because it's a super sunny day. And I also, I have this scarf around my head because it's windy and my hair is blowing all over the place. So if I said hello to you on the street, you might not know who I was. So you wouldn't know me until I took all of this stuff off. So if I took the mask off and I took off my sunglasses, then you would know. It's just your friend, Mrs. Mead. So today I'm going to tell you a story about a time right after Jesus was resurrected from the dead, that he was walking along a road and he met some friends. And the friends didn't recognize that it was Jesus. Jesus had died on the cross and they had heard that he had been resurrected, but they never thought in a million years that they would see him. He was walking with them and they were talking about all of the events that had happened leading up to Jesus' death, all of his teachings and all of the miracles that he performed. And as they were walking along the road, Jesus continued to talk to them and it started to get dark and he was gonna walk on. And the friend said to him, please stay with us tonight, come and have dinner with us. And so Jesus went along with them. They still didn't know that it was Jesus. It wasn't until they sat down at the dinner table and Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he blessed the bread like he had done on the, at the Last Supper. And right at that moment, they realized that it was Jesus, their friend, right there with them. And at that moment, Jesus disappeared from their sight. They were so astounded and so amazed and they said to each other, weren't our hearts burning inside? Didn't we know that he was someone special walking with us? So nowadays, we are outside, we're with people that have masks on that we might not recognize. One of the things that we need to remember is that we need to, uh, we need to think about Jesus walking beside us at all times. So that if we see someone and we say hello to them, it could be Jesus right there. We want to treat everyone we meet the way that we would treat Jesus if we were walking with him. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for walking with us, especially during scary or uncertain times. Help us to recognize you in the people that we meet and treat everyone with kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then they said to them, 
Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it was almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As the weeks have continued to go by, it seems as if more and more people are needing to get outside and exercise. You see many people taking walks. In fact, one of our neighbors mentioned to us that it almost appeared as if there was a parade going by in front of her home. Now, we have heard talk of our time having changed. We talk about now living with coronavirus time because all the usual markers that we would use to determine where we are in a given week or a given day have been all moved from us. So we talk about corona time, but I believe also we have created something called coronavirus walks. Uh, Maybe you've experienced this. Uh, Now, along with these unique dynamics to our walks, there are some clear contradictions. Now, first of all, we are walking and there is a choreography now to our walking. Because as you are going down the sidewalk and you see other people approaching you, People begin to show which way they may be going and certain people will move one direction and maybe go into the street or off into the grass. All of this is to make sure that we're practicing good physical distancing. It's almost as if now for a walk there's a little bit of a dance that takes place as you move and as you bob and as you weave so that you can continue walking, moving, but not get too close to the other person. But this is now also a place where a contradiction has come in. I don't know if you've noticed this, but as you're walking and as you're doing that little bit of a dance, people more than ever are acknowledging each other. So as we are moving further apart, they are taking the time to say hello or to nod or even to ask, so how are you doing today? Very interesting what we are experiencing, the different changes with coronavirus taking over our our lives. The passage today is about a walk. Now, there is something comforting when we come to this passage. If you think back over a number of weeks and the places we've been, where our scripture has taken us, things have been rather intense. Just going back to Lazarus and the rising of Lazarus from the dead, and there was great sorrow, but then there was joy. Jesus enters Jerusalem and there's tremendous hopefulness, but we know that the winds are blowing and things change so quickly and then there will be betrayal and denial and then there's shock at the crucifixion, incredible celebration with the resurrection and the appearances of Jesus. All of this has been so very 
intense. And now we come to a walk. Much like what we are seeking in our own lives right now, we, we need that time to breathe some other air. Just, just to get out. Just to walk. And so we find comfort in walking along with these two friends as they leave Jerusalem. Now they are discussing the events that they'd experienced. They are probably walking in silence at times. But in this walk, we discover a contradiction. Because as they walk along, Jesus joins them. Now, it mentions in the passage that they were not able to recognize Jesus. But as they went along, they were, of course, shocked that this person was coming from the same direction they were coming and did not know all that had taken place. But then Jesus starts to explain to them why these events needed to happen. And they still seemed to be at a loss why this third companion would have that kind of knowledge as to what they had experienced. Well, after a time, they were going to take a break, and they went inside. They went inside to refresh themselves. They went inside to eat. And when they had slowed down, calmed down, and they were sharing that meal, and Jesus broke the bread, it broke open the scene. Uh, they, they recognized Jesus. It's as if grace was broken open in front of them, and the words being spoken were now made visible, and they received this grace. Jesus was no longer with them, but because of this experience, they reversed their course. They changed directions in their lives, and they headed back from where they had come. I think we need to breathe some different kind of air. So I'm going to ask you if you can, through your imagination, uh, maybe take a walk with me right now. If, If that's possible, if you can just think in your mind of us together, maybe two of us, just going out and getting a little exercise, breathing some different air, and, and starting our, our walk. Oh, well, did, did you notice that Jesus was walking with us? Did, did you realize that? See, see, I think we know all about contradictions in our walks. And this whole physical distancing, that's, that's nothing new to us. I think maybe we've been practicing what we could call faith distancing. We, we've been doing a bit of a dance with the resurrected Jesus. Oh yeah, we, we acknowledge that Jesus is there. But I wonder if we have kept our distance. We, we've kept a distance from the risen Christ. See, all of this isn't so new to us. We may be quite familiar with how this works. But I wonder at this time, when we have been inside, when we come back inside now with the risen Christ, realizing he's been there all along, and when we come back inside with the risen Christ at this time, this unique time, if maybe the scene is broken open, maybe we can break open the the scene and understand that, that Christ is there. The grace of Christ is broken open for us. The grace of Christ that allows us to close that distance, close that gap, to not keep Christ just off of our lives. Again, we know, we know Christ is there, but, but we've kept that distance. 
And when we close that distance, then I think we too will have the ability to go in new directions. Uh, We'll maybe reverse our course as we move forward during this time and beyond this time. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let us now turn to God in prayer. God of resurrection hope, join us on our journey and open our eyes to your grace-filled presence. The road we travel right now feels long, at times even never-ending. We crave a return to life as we knew it and struggle with the growing awareness that there will be no going back. Fill our weary hearts with your peace, your comfort, and your joy. Show us the way forward through this uncertainty and grant us the hope we need for each day. You made yourself known to your disciples in the breaking of bread. We pray this day for those who have no bread, for the rapidly growing number of people who worry about their next meal. To those who have known food insecurity for a long time, and to those who are brand new to the experience, lend your comfort and your strength. Fill them with all good things and lead us in helping them connect with the resources they need. Multiply the gifts and resources of the many programs and organizations working tirelessly to feed the hungry. Give their staffs and volunteers the fortitude to bear up beneath this Herculean effort and show us clearly how we can best assist them. Your disciples encourage you to turn aside from the road and to stay the night with them. We pray this day for those who have no permanent place to lay their heads, and for all those facing housing insecurity as they lose their incomes. Bless the work of all the shelters still striving to provide safe space for those who need it. Protect the health of all who enter their doors since they have no option to quarantine at a distance. Lead us in the ongoing struggle to ensure affordable, safe, and adequate housing for all in our community, both during this crisis and beyond it. We pray, too, for those who are vulnerable in their homes. Shield and cover those who suffer abuse behind their closed doors. Break through the cycle of violence. Grant courage to the victims and assistance to escape. 
lead the abusers to true repentance and rehabilitation at a safe distance from those they have harmed. We pray for those who are aging in place and now find it physically difficult and perhaps even dangerous to be in their homes. As fear of exposure to coronavirus deeply complicates accessing necessary in-home care or delays the decision to relocate to an assisted living. Guide our fragile seniors through the various risks before them to the best options for their health and well-being. Support their families as they journey this difficult road together and aid their communication with one another. And of course, we pray for those who are sick and suffering, for all of our healthcare workers, for those sinking under the weight of isolation, for those contending with mental illness, and for those grieving the loss of loved ones. Surround them with your care and compassion. Provide for each as you know they have need. And hear us now as we name before you those who are particularly on our hearts this day. Almighty God, receive these prayers we offer, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us witnesses to the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, through whom we now pray the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May Christ be beside us. May he be behind us. And may he be within us as we know the power of the resurrected Christ now and every day. Amen.